This episode of Hydro Show is sponsored by Hydro Mag, the UK's independent hydroponics magazine. It's now time for the final mega room of the series, and today it's the turn of Bro Supplies in Washington, Newcastle. That's right. So let's see if they can step up to the plate with the season finale of Hydro Show TV Mega Rooms. And finally, magnetic versus digital ballasts. Which one should we go for? More specifically, is it worth paying the extra money for a digital ballast? Well, we interviewed Steve Selman from Sol Digital, who shed some more light on the subject. I'm now joined in the studio by Steve from Sol Digital, who is going to talk us through the progression of lighting ballast technology. Hi Steve. Hi there. Now, uh, we've got three ballasts in front of us, um, all from different manufacturers and all with different price points. Um, should we start by talking about the, the lowest price one on the end there? I mean, would you say this is where ballast technology started? Uh, these are the original uh, magnetic ballasts that were industry standard for a long time until obviously the, the digitals came along, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what's the difference between these two? I mean, what, I mean, obviously there's digital and magnetic, but in terms of function, what, what changed? Uh, magnetics are uh, copper or aluminium coils uh, with capacitors uh, and igniters. That's the three main components. Obviously electronics uh, rely on chips and uh, are far more efficient because of that. Um, so as I understand it, with the magnetic ballast, the, the coils that are inside them can actually cause it to become hotter. Um, are there any other disadvantages with using a magnetic ballast? Uh, well, yes, certainly they, they do become hotter over time. Uh, obviously, um, being steel and, and coil, they're heavier for a start. Um, the heat is obviously not a good thing for a grow room environment. Uh, excess heat um, is something that you know, we want to try and reduce as much as possible. Uh, the other disadvantage of magnetic ballasts is, is they do become noisy over time. Uh, they have plates that are, are laminated together. Uh, the, the glue that they use to laminate them together in time will degrade, which means the plates will vibrate. Uh, and if you've got a lot of those in a grow room, then that's quite substantial noise, which um, you know, is not, uh, not very advantageous. Okay, so in the middle here, we have a, a silver digital ballast. Would you say that this is one of the first generations of digital ballasts after the magnetic one? Uh, yes, indeed, um, a, a digital ballast that superseded uh, the magnetics. Again, if we're talking about efficiency, um, able to strike the lamps and bring them up to full speed within three to five minutes, as opposed to the 20 minutes a magnetic ballast quite a might take. So, yeah. quite a saving there. And with this ballast, we obviously have more efficiency, um, better lumen output, um, and quieter, I imagine. Are there any other differences with the magnetic ballast? Digital ballast, obviously cooler running, um, so uh, you'll see the design of the case here uh, dis is designed to dissipate heat. So with this digital ballast, we've, we've got a few differences with the, with the magnetic ballast. I mean, it'll run quieter and obviously it'll, it'll work more efficiently. Um, are there any other differences? Uh, obviously, as you can see by the size of the units, we've got uh, a smaller compactor unit. They weigh less, so easier to position within your grow room. So we're looking at uh, about a 30% uh, improvement in, in efficiency with, with ballasts that are around today over a magnetic ballast. Um, we have things such as um, uh, a restrike built into them, so uh, if there's a power failure and a lamp goes out, then uh, they will restrike intelligently. So uh, as opposed to our, our normal light switch, which we can switch on and off without any problem, uh, if you try and do that to a high intensity discharge lamp, you're, you're gonna damage the lamp. So these kind of ballasts have features built in which will pause for 60 seconds to, and will not attempt to ignite the lamp until it's at a correct temperature that's not gonna damage the lamp. So with the first magnetic ballast that we spoke about, um, we talked about flicker. Um, is that kind of eradicated with, with this new digital ballast? Yes, in, indeed, they'll, they'll regulate the flow of electricity so um, that they run the, the bulb at a constant lumen output uh, as opposed to a magnetic ballast. And that obviously passes on advantages to, to your lamps in your grow room um, and in turn will make them more efficient. Indeed, yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Okay, so this digital ballast in front of us is a, is a 600 watt, so I couldn't use like a 1000 watt bulb with that, could I? Uh, no, you can't, but uh, again, another advancement is, um, is there are ballasts now that you can change the percentage uh, of the lamp output and indeed put different lamps in and, and we've brought some of those to, uh, to demo today. Fantastic, well let's go take a look. Sure. Okay, so we've got two different types of adjustable ballast here. Um, what can you tell me about them? 
Uh, we've got uh, a 600, 400, 250 adjustable and a 1000, 600 and 400 adjustable, both with, uh, with an overdrive feature. So what are the main benefits of having a, a digital ballast that can adjust to these different wattages? Uh, well, typically people will start lights under fluorescent light, which is um, you know, lower intensity, uh, and then move to a metal halide and then up to a, a, a larger flowering lamp. So typically someone might use a 400 watt metal halide, dim down to 250 for the plants when they come from the fluorescent phase. Uh, they then step that up to 400. Um, and then maybe change to uh, high pressure sodium at 600. And then as we get onto the uh, flowering stage, uh, we've got the overdrive feature, which again uh, provides more lumens to your garden. Okay, uh, well let's do a demonstration in the studio and show the difference in light intensities. Yeah, sure, we can uh, use a light meter to uh, show the different intensities uh, from the lamps. Fantastic. Okay, so in the interest uh, of this demonstration, we're going to be using the 600 watt digital ballast. And we want to show the difference in lumens between the 250 watt setting and the 400 watt setting. Um, so we're at 250 now. Um, should we do a, a reading of the lumens? Yeah, sure. From the light meter, we can see we're at about 30,000 lumens, which is uh, correct for a 250 watt lamp. And if you care to turn up to 400, you'll see the lumens gradually increase up to about 50,000. Uh, which we'd expect for a 400 watt. And it's going to take a, a couple of minutes to get up there. Okay, so from that demonstration, we can quite clearly see an increase in lumens between the 250 setting and the 400 watt setting. Um, with other digital ballasts that I've seen, they work on a percentage. Um, why is this one different? Uh, the adjuster watt enables uh, the end user to use lamp sizes that are very familiar to them. So uh, 250, 400, 600, the, the lamp sizes that the, the grower is used to. Um, so rather than being a percentage of 600 or a percentage of 400, it's something that the, the customer can um, identify with. Okay, so the lights have been on for roughly 15 minutes now, and it's probably a good time to demonstrate the restrike feature. Yes, if you'd like to uh, turn the ballast off, uh, and then we try to switch the ballast back on again, um, we'll see there'll be a pause uh, because the ballast is detecting that the lamp has just been on. Uh, and it will try to ignite the lamp every minute until it reaches the point where it's acceptable to, uh, to ignite the lamp. Uh, and this prevents damage both to the ballast and to the lamp. Okay, well I'll switch these off now. Okay, and if you'd like to try and switch them back on again, we'll see that it's not restruck the lamp. Mm. So the unit has detected uh, that the lamp is too hot. Um, so it will wait at least 60 seconds until it tries to restrike again uh, and of course it will uh, strike them in sequence um, as per the ignition uh, control. This episode of Hydro Show is sponsored by Hydromag, the UK's independent hydroponics magazine. It's now time for the final mega room of the series, and today it's the turn of Grow Supplies in Washington, Newcastle. That's right. So let's see if they can step up to the plate with the season finale of Hydro Show TV Mega Rooms.